Hey everyone, Fizz Ben Kamenacha, and today doing a quick little tutorial on the Ryzen AR Cardboard headset that I mentioned last time in last week's video. And before I do that, just leave a comment below if you want to see any more of these types of videos, or if you want to see less or anything. I definitely like hearing from you guys about what you want to see. And before we dive into the tutorial, let's just do a quick rundown of the Ryzen's website. So you can see here, here's like an example of how it's being used. And link to click on it. I'll also make sure to leave a link to this website if you want to peruse it yourself um, later on. How it actually works, so if you want to see kind of how that the headset is connected to the smartphone and all of that logistics, they have a quick video there. And this is actually the, the more interesting part is that they're heavily emphasizing AR kit and AR core, which as I mentioned last time, these two technologies allow Horizon to actually get positional tracking. And you can also use Vuforia if you want to do some image recognition. So for example, with these, the, the Ryzen headset, they, they come with this like kind of mini tracker that you can use. And so, and the starter code that they provide, they actually make it really easy for you to, to get started with Vuforia. In this specific video, what I'm gonna actually be focusing on is AR core. But I mean, pretty much everything that we cover in, in this video can be applied to ARK or Vuforia, and it's really, it's really easy to get started. So with that said, this is pretty much what I wanted to explore, and let's just kind of dive into this tutorial. All right, here in Unity is just a fresh, brand new project. And so at the start of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is just show you how to get Horizon set up and to get AR Core working with it. So that's going to be the first half. And then the second half, what I'm going to go to do is jump into how you can set up kind of a quick little demo with, say, Dodgeball. So to start off, what you need to do is go to the Horizon forums for the basic setup. I'll leave again a link to that in the description. And just go ahead and click this to download a zip of the Horizon package. I've already gone ahead and done that. And once you do, you'll have a Unity package, which you can then go ahead and just drag into your project folder like this. And then once you get this prompt, go ahead and import it. It'll take a couple seconds. All right, once Horizon's in, now this is just a specific issue with this package that they include Vuforia. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete Vuforia. And there's, I think, one reference within an editor script right here. If you go ahead, open, double click this to open up Visual Studios. Once Visual Studios loads, go ahead and comment out this define to say that you're not using Vuforia. Of course, if you are using Vuforia, keep it in, but uh, in this specific case, we're, we're not using it. We're just gonna use straight up AR core. So that'll, that'll be fine. And with that, that should set up Horizon. What I'm actually gonna go ahead and do is just create another Horizon folder and just uh, have all of the, the everything else live underneath it. Let's go ahead and drag everything in there. All right, great. Now that I've cleaned it up, I'm just gonna go ahead, go to our Horizon sample scenes, and we'll just go to the Vuforia tracking just to kind of get a reference to how this works. And so as you can see here, here's the, the image target for this specific image. So if you were ever wanting to do any tracking with Vuforia, you can easily just go ahead, add something like this in with this image target. And once you get that set up, you're pretty much good to go. Now you can obviously see here, here are the missing stuff that I that I actually removed. But in our specific case, what we want, want to do is just go to a new scene. And once you do that, you can go to Horizon, in our case, Horizon, Horizon Prefabs. And you'll see here you have two prefabs, one for Horizon, which is just pure Horizon without Vuforia, and you have another one with Vuforia. Go ahead, drag that into the hierarchy. Delete the original camera that comes with a new scene. And that pretty much go, goes ahead and sets up the Horizon prefab. So that's pretty much good to go at this point. And we've kind of set up Horizon to work with pretty much just standard gyroscopic movement. So you have three degrees of freedom, but let's go ahead and actually set this up to work with AR Core. You know, for that, what we need to do is go to AR Core's website. You'll need to do pretty much any of this standard development. Uh, we have a tutorial on specifically that, so you can check that out in the card that's right above us. And so you'll need the, the latest version of 2017 uh, Android SDK setup, and you'll want to go ahead and download this SDK. 
I've actually gone ahead and done that already. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that within our project, just like that. Again, just like a resin, this is going to take a couple seconds to actually import in. Great. So now that Google AR core is implemented in, let's just actually just drag out our AR core device here, just so that we have a reference of what we need to do. So there's really not much to this. All we need to do is add a tracked pose driver and we're going to actually ignore the AR core background render. What that does is actually render out a, a the actual camera image to the screen. We don't want that because in the case of our device here, the way this works is anything that's rendered as black on here will come out as see through when we're looking at the top and looking at the real world. So in this case, we actually don't want to to render the real world because it's going to be rendered as black. And just for reference, here's an example image of what is actually rendered to screen. So we know we don't want the background render and we want this AR core session here. So really all we need to do is go ahead, copy our AR core session, put that, you can pretty much put that anywhere. I'm going to go ahead and put that at the top of our horizon prefab. And I'm going to go ahead, copy our tracked pose driver, and we'll put that on top of our, um, our AR camera. Now the AR camera here is not a single pass camera. You can actually see that they have a left and right camera here. We don't actually have to put the tracked pose driver on each because the, the tracked pose driver actually represents uh, where the, the phone is and if you move the phone, obviously both cameras need to move along with it. So you really only need to have it in on one game object. So we'll put it on top of the, the parent of both cameras so that both the cameras move along with it. So that's that. Obviously, because we're using the track pose driver for our rotation and position, as you can see right here on the track pose driver, we don't want the AR gyro camera. So we can go ahead, remove that, and we can keep pretty much everything else here. So with that, we've pretty much set up what needs to happen within our scene for AR Core to actually work. You can go ahead and just save your un untitled scene right now. Um, I'll go ahead, put it within our assets, and we'll call this Test AR Core. So we have that. Now to actually set up AR Core to work, you need to go ahead to your build settings, add this scene in, make sure you switch to Android, which I'll go ahead and do right now. One thing I should also point out is that you should delete your, your AR core device from your scene. Otherwise, you're going to have too many cameras rendering and it's going to cause problems. Once that finishes, go ahead and check your player settings. And here, I'm going to just change this to Fused VR. Go ahead, just add a package name. So let's say here, fusedvr.test. Make sure your minimum API level is set to 7.0 or higher and for that to actually work you need to have and the android sdk set up properly and have 7.0 actually imported you can make sure your target api level is set to the highest installed and just keep scrolling through here i think the rest is fine you also want to make sure you have multi-threaded rendering turned off and the reason for that is because ar core is <laughs> using the rest of your your cpus and just turn on AR core supported. And of course, if you're using Vuforia, you'll, you'll actually need to, to install that and do that properly. I'm not gonna bother with that for this tutorial because I wanna just focus solely on AR core, but that's where you'd be looking. And with that set up, we've uh, pretty much have everything that, that we need to, to actually go ahead and try it out on device. You can go ahead, hit build and run if you've set up your device already to work with Android development and you can try it out for yourself, go ahead and just plop it into your headset. Now, in the second half of this tutorial, what I wanna do is just kinda go ahead and show you how you can make an example app. So if you've verified that it actually works on device, albeit there's really nothing to actually test with, and from there you can actually kind of just build whatever you want. One thing that I've kind of noticed just from trying to decide what I want to actually build for this tutorial is your core input here is actually the fact that you have positional movement. Obviously, you can't really interact with your smartphone and you could potentially add some other interaction with say Vuforia, but if you're just doing solely AR core or AR kit, then you're just gonna have to be focusing on the fact that your player can move around in six degrees of freedom. 
which actually can kind of open some doors to, to different things. So in this specific section of the video, what I want to focus on is just kind of building a simple kind of dodgeball-esque kind of game. So what we'll do here is uh, the only asset I'm really going to be using off of the store is the battle cannon. So you can go ahead, import that in or download that. And once you do that, you'll be pretty much set to follow along with the rest of this. I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you actually want to get it for yourself. Once you get the battle cannon, go ahead, go to your prefabs. You can pick any of these. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the most upgraded version. And you can see there's a bunch of different meshes here that actually control the kind of cannon look and feel. Let me go ahead and rotate our cannon to face the player. So you need to offset that by 180. And you can use the functionality of AR core to actually place this on a plane. Of course, unfortunately, you have to make a lot of that stuff automatic, but because the, the user doesn't really have control, but you can like render this onto a plane. In my specific case, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just lower this by negative three and push it back by negative five. So if you're kind of standing, this is approximately so some somewhere so that it kind of looks like it's kind of flat on the ground. It's not perfect, but like you can you can get the, the picture of kind of what, what might happen when you're kind of standing and the, the floor is right underneath you. So that's the cannon. And next thing I just want to go ahead and do is create a script for just kind of every two to three seconds, have the cannon rotate and shoot towards the player. So let's call this cannon rotate. Here, I'm just gonna set up a quick coroutine and I'll just type this out first and then explain what happens afterwards. All right, I've gone ahead and set up kind of the bare bones structure for our script. What you see here is a few variables. Row one, we want a transform to our camera, which is the head. Two, you want a transform for the, the actual cannon mesh. And three, you want a kind of game object that represents where the cannon should actually fire out of. You also have a projectile here, which is gonna be a prefab that we can use to shoot. So I've gone ahead to just set up a start coroutine and just tell it to every two to three seconds here, wait for what we're about to do next. And for that, basically what we wanna do is go ahead and say at head. So what that does is goes ahead and tells our cannon to rotate towards where the head actually is facing. Then we want to actually go ahead and spawn our projectile. So what I'll go ahead and do is say game object ball instantiate projectile, projectile. And what we need to say where it should actually be firing from. So in this case, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is fire from position. So that's the position of where it should be. And we should also take its rotation. The last thing I wanna do is on our ball, we'll probably have a rigid body. So let's go ahead and get that rigid body and just kind of set its velocity to its own forward. So kind of make it so that it's always facing forward when it, when it fires. And you can kind of set this variable to whatever you want. You can also create a public variable for actually controlling how much it fires. In this case, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and set it to five kind of meters per second. So that is our Canon rotate script. Basically all it's doing is every two to three seconds rotates to a random direction that faces the player. I'm sorry, not random, but it faces the player and we just fire our projectile. So that represents this gonna go ahead go drop back into unity and let's just create our projectile first so first go ahead I'll actually create it here there we go go ahead just create a sphere to represent our ball what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just kind of make this a little smaller so that it's not massive uh, reset the position and like we said we need to add a rigid body to this thing make sure you have gravity checked you don't really need drag of any kind. And uh, that, that pretty much it does it for our actual ball.
Let's also make sure we set it as a prefab. So go ahead, drag that within your assets folder and you should have an, an actual, just a simple ball to test with. Next, let's go ahead, set up our cannon. So let's go ahead, just drag the cannon rotate script on here and then we just gotta fill up everything. So for the head, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is drag our AR camera. Just make sure this is the one that actually has the trapped pose driver on it. For the actual cannon, go ahead, drag the small upgrade onto here. And just to test and make sure this is the right one, you can just go ahead, rotate it, make sure that that, that actually moves the cannon. Next up, we have the cannon fire from. What I'm gonna do for this is go ahead, just create a simple little game object for this drag this to up just to be a little approximately where it's gonna fire from and let's just name this as from and drag that onto our ken from and the last thing is our projectile which we'll just go ahead and drag right there now just to test this let's go ahead and hit play within the inspector and hopefully every there you go you got a little a little fire animation. Obviously, you might want to increase the speed a little bit. And if you just drag it around, it should hopefully always just kind of fire towards where the actual player is. Let me just change the perspective so that it makes a little more sense. There you go. And yeah, that 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 you all enjoyed this video. Cardboard AR is super exciting to me, but I also think the tech has a lot to prove. That said, Cardboard AR is such a cheap option for people to get into AR development that that in and of itself sounds really exciting. So if you like this video, make sure to smack that like button because it helps us out a ton. And if you're new to the channel, then subscribe for a lot of other tutorials and other types of VR and AR content. Until next time, this has been Fuse Man, and I'm signing out.